Yo, I get tags, dude. Alright, guys, we're just getting everything set up, getting it going. We'll like the, the zombie midget porn. What? Are you gonna make your first appearance on Power Hour? The What's live streaming on YouTube. What's Power Hour? So basically, we pick a different topic of the week. We right. talk about how to, like, so today's squats. We're gonna do a tutorial on squats, uh -huh. how to do them, where are the benefits, how to find out your max, all that fun stuff. Right. And then we're interacting, so like people are gonna be here on the chat, asking questions, all right. types of cool stuff. Oh, so. Someday. Yeah, anytime you want to jump in on a 6.30 power hour, you're more than welcome. Not today, because I've just now been here 13 hours. Yeah. I would say, maybe time to check out. Time for a nap. Are you in deadlifting today or not? No, maybe at the end, but we're focusing on squats. We could deadlift at the end, possibly. Okay, squats or squats? No, I know, but that's what I'm saying. We're just going to do tutorials of it, mostly. Alright, let's see. Grand, still on Oh, it's squats today. All right, that's cool. You can do whatever you want. I do what I want. I don't know if this is what he's doing. Huh? Exactly. Alright guys, we're just trying to set it up so it's linked over to our website. Give me like two more minutes and then we'll get this rocking. And again, anytime we have questions guys, we'll always leave it on the comment box if you guys are watching on YouTube. If you're it's going to be a little noisy here tonight guys. We got Friday night popping at the UFC gym. Huntington Station. So again, if you guys want to jump in on a power hour, you can come down to the UFC gym and if we're not too packed out for that night, you can jump on in with us and have an awesome workout. Alright, your 10 by 10 squat. Long thing fucking up today. Yeah. You're all hard that hurt. Alright guys, so also again, if you have questions that are going to be different than let's say squats and what we're covering today, you can still type it in because even though we're focusing on squats, we're focusing on how to implement them into a program, we're focusing on the techniques of it and a lot of the benefits, we can still go over a bunch of other things because we got a full hour of power hour and the first 30 minutes is going to be me, maybe Jared, maybe Chuck jumping in here and there, but the rest of the guys aren't going to be down here yet, so we have a little bit more room to freestyle and go over a couple things. So again, let's start until I get the squat set up and before we go into technique, I kind of wanted to just go over a little bit of really what the benefits of squats are. And now first when we look at squats, there's really a family of different techniques that we can use. We have our regular standard squats, we have prisoner squats, we have overhead squats, we have front squats, you even have Bulgarian split squats, you have single leg squats or pistol squats, you have hack squats, wall squats, we have all these different variations. But they're always going to come back to a pretty much basic principle and when we're looking at technique and then again the benefits of it as well. So all these different variations will have different benefits or slightly different benefits only because we might be incorporating a different angle, different position. But when we really look at squats, the benefits are going to be, first, hormonally, what's happening to our body. So we're going to increase a bunch of, not only just uh, testosterone, but human growth hormones and other hormones that are kicking in, other chemicals and other different um, synapses that are firing in our brain. So we might be getting more serotonin released, might be getting a little bit of dopamine going. A bunch of different things that are going to be happening to our body. So it's not just, okay, my legs are going to get bigger, but also we're going to release more hormones so that... First, we're going to be able to lift more weight. Second, we're going to be able to actually recover faster. And third, you're going to have more energy throughout the day. Not only that day, but for continuously after that, if we keep them consistent in a program. All right, guys, so that's the initial first highlight of the benefits. Secondary, when we look at benefits, now let's look at application. And that kind of transitions into how do we want to implement them. They're not only great for athletic purposes, just like when we talk about deadlifts, when we talk about our clean and jerk, clean and press, cleans and hangs, all those fun stuff. 
Squats is one of those basic principles or basic movements that's going to be a standard in pretty much any athletic program that you see. And there's going to be a lot of variations that can come off of it. Like we said, Bulgarian split squats even. We have wall squats. We have pistol squats. We could do even different tempoed squats. We can go to our front squats. A really important thing that I like to point out for front squats specifically is our rep max. Once we hit seven reps on a front squat, our shoulders, nine times out of ten, are going to fatigue faster than our legs, our hip flexors, our glutes, or our lower back. So what we want to do is make sure that we're only going to hit seven reps. Otherwise, we're really going to fatigue the shoulders more. A, potentially put ourselves in some danger technique-wise, and then B, not really get the benefits of the actual exercise. Okay, so that's looking at some of the benefits. We'll go over techniques when I actually get ourselves, get me, Jared, and Chuck squatting. Um, I don't really think Chuck's going to be squatting today, actually. What are you doing, Scott? Are you, are you squatting? Would you like me to show you a squat and put you to share? I mean, if you think you can handle it, Mr. Form Police here. So in case you guys didn't know, Chuck's our Form Police. Is, uh, board at number one. Oh, it's calling out on the scoreboard. So that's another thing, guys. If you want to challenge yourselves and also challenge us, we're going to be posting everyone's max lifts, okay? you also obviously be able to see them, but whether it's squats, whether it's bench press, whether it's deadlifts, whether it's uh, clean hangs or variations of all the above, looking at planks, we're going to have all of our numbers posted up on the website at lifeofafighter.com. Uh, we'll put them up under the forum so you guys can post there, or you can even comment on these videos, and you'll be able to see, again, who's at what max and where do you guys kind of hang up and stack up with it. All right, so I'm just posting up this on the website. And then we'll go to the technique portion of it. And again, guys, feel free. We have questions on what I just talked about, the benefits, or if it makes you think of something else, you can just let us know, ask those questions, and we'll get it rocking. Let me just check, see if we got any questions coming in yet. No? All right, cool. No questions yet, but we'll get right to the technique after this. Jared, you getting ready to squat? I'm eating pop tarts. <laughs> so right now, let's uh, take that for example. Jared, he's eating pop tarts right now. And now, I'm not going to sit here and condone that concept of constantly eating pop tarts. But when we're looking at a lift, okay, when we're looking at high compound, uh, um, high energy or energy demanding movements and compound movements where we're involving multiple joints and multiple muscle groups. We're going to be burning through a lot more calories. We're going to be depleting glycogen storages. And a really interesting number, some facts here that you guys might have heard if you listened to the Tony Ricci episode two pot or episode 18, part two podcast, was we were going over how much glycogen, really sugar, energy that your body will store. So we have 500 grams in our muscles, more or less, and 200 grams in our liver. So that gives us 700 grams of glycogen that we can pull from throughout a workout. So if we add that up, that's Really, you're looking at 2,800 calories. So if you're doing a workout more than 2,800 calories, more like a marathoner or an endurance athlete, high-level endurance athlete, triathlete, then you might want to consider, obviously, having your gel packets or maybe even switching over to a more ketosis-based nutrition diet so you can pull from your fat storages. That's a whole other topic that we'll dive into another day. But Chuck's going to be creeping behind my shoulder just a little bit, right, Chuck? Squat. Oh yeah, we're gonna squat. I'm just like getting everything live up on the site. We gotta update the code. I'm just gonna stand in front. I want everyone to look at me, right, guys? You just want you don't want to see everyone else squat. You just want to stare at me while I talk. Yeah, don't make a mess, Jared. Where's John? John, why aren't you yelling at Jared? He's eating pop tarts. Yeah, but not over here. This this is this is where I bail. Well, yeah. If he wants to, because uh, you're not 17 trying to gain 10 pounds. That's a good. We have completely different goals. All right, guys. So now we're gonna start to break down the technique. I'm gonna get my big head out of the way. I mean, I'm just saying. If you want to put on 10 pounds, we can get some pop tarts. I thought I was 17 and wanted to. And then you're like, oh wait, no, I'm just jacked and awesome. And I realize I'm 40. I want to lose. Then. <laughs> All right. You don't want to lose weight, right, Chuck? You just want to be jacked and awesome. All right, guys, it looks like the streaming is getting a little slow here. So just stick with us. It's going to come back up. 
Uh, the video output's gonna tighten up just a little bit. I'm making a couple tweaks here. And again, if you're on the website and you wanna have a chat with us, just click on the top left. There's gonna be a Life of a Fighter Friday Night Power Hour button that'll pop up. Take you over to YouTube. You can drop in a chat and questions there. All right, guys, it's technique time. So we're gonna get right to it. So before we even go to the bar, we're gonna look at what we're doing without the bar. So a great statement that I like is foundationally are we strong? And what I mean by that is do we have a good technique? Do we have a good foundation? So if we have, let's say, our knees buckle and our feet turn out or our back curves as we're squatting, we're not gonna wanna put a lot of weight on that because that's a faulty foundation. First, we wanna make sure we have good technique. So one thing I like to look at is our overhead squat. Overhead squats used with whether it's NASM, um, different strength conditioning certifications, ISSA, we could look at CSCS. It's a very helpful movement to let us know if we need to work on our posture, if we need to work on our hip flexibility, if we need to work on our knees or our adductors, abductors, hip flexors, all that fun stuff. So I'm gonna go over, take a couple steps back and go over our overhead squat. So again, for overhead squat, we're calling it that because our hands are going, guess what, overhead. Okay, so we're going to start hands straight overhead. We can work with a bar or we can work with just our hands. For now, we're going to work with just the bar. Okay, we're going to keep that posture up. Right, Cal? So we're going to keep that posture up. And what we're going to look at, too, is you're going to look at your feet. Do your feet want to turn out? Do your feet want to turn in? Are your knees going to want to turn out? Are they going to want to buckle in? Are they going to collapse? Are they going to take completely out? That's what we're looking for. Okay, I would highly recommend take a video of yourself squatting, send it into us, check it with your coach or someone else, go from there. So again, overhead squat, we're keeping that good posture, we're going full range of motion, we're going to get nice and deep into that squat, and then we're going to drive up. Okay guys, I recommend going for about 10 reps, so you can start to see, maybe the first rep isn't going to look super clean, but once you get a couple of reps in, it'll start to clean up. Now we're going to go to our just standard, regular squat, okay, so we'll break that down next. Here it is. Okay, Mark. Drop forward with the hinge around. You want to go front squat or do you want to go regular back squat? Are you going right into the Alright, so I'm going to go over the squat. Oh, yeah. So I want to try to conserve my energy. I'm just going to go over the technique of this. Alright, guys, so we're going to go back squat first. And then, now that everyone's starting to show up, we're going to dive right into the But first, again, we're going to go over the technique of our squat before we go into the deadlift, see what we got for our max reps. Alright guys, so normally when you go for squats, you can actually have a squat rack or a squat cage to work with. Right now, we're going to play it a little bit dangerous, okay, but I feel comfortable enough with the weight that we'll be okay. So, yeah, we're going to throw that bar up, set it over. This isn't the best way to get that bar on your back, guys. Again, I'm not going to be highly endorse it. But again, when we're doing a back squat, there's a lot of different... Um, I guess you could say viewpoints on this. You have a grip toe uh, style, or grip toe with great strength conditioning coach. He has a little bit of a different style. I don't necessarily agree with everything he is. I'm not going to sit here and argue this technique. So if you like that and see great results from it, fine. But ultimately, I think you got to do the best for your body to do too. So we have, again, shoulders squeezing down the back, picking our spot straight ahead. We're going to stay on it. And we're going to go through a full range of motion, okay? Let those hips kick back, and then drop them down. Hold for a second, full drive up, good squeeze. Now, let's talk about shoulder position. So, depending on your shoulders, if you have tight shoulders, if you have any injuries, the wider the hands, the better it's going to actually be for your body, for your shoulder engagement. The tighter your hands are, the more pressure you're going to feel on those shoulders. So, get a nice and wide. Okay? I like to actually grip the bar to engage those back muscles on our posterior kinetic chain a little bit more. If you guys don't like it, you can hang them. But ultimately, make sure that we get that good posture. And the bar is not resting on your neck up here. The bar is actually resting on our traps. This way, we're not putting pressure on our nerves, or any kind of spinal issues that you may have. Keep it on the muscles. Okay, so again, I'll do a couple reps, get us nice and warm. You guys can answer the questions that you have and get it to the fun. Get to round. Showing up, guys. Again, get done. 
Mike, you have a license for those guns? What's up? I got two licenses, one for each one. Yeah, Okay, now I lost count because we're getting tilted. So, guys, that's our back squat. Now, let's go over that front squat. So, we were talking about the front squat, right? So, we have a couple different setups we can use our hands with. First one, you just have the hands straight up, but you don't even actually touch the bar or your shoulders. Hands are just going straight up in the air, okay? One thing I'm going to warn you with our front squat position is when our hands come straight up, we're not actually touching either our shoulders, not touching the bar itself with a hang, or we're crossing our arms, we're just holding them straight up, it's going to end up usually pressing that bar pretty close to your neck, putting a lot of pressure on your trachea and that airway. So if you feel uncomfortable there, obviously don't stay there, do a different variation. A lot of people don't have the flexibility to curl those wrists and keep the elbows up. Let's notice, I have that flexibility to keep my hand, get it all the way down to my shoulder. If you don't have that flexibility, I would highly recommend just going with those hands across. This is going to be your best bet and your safest bet. A, for shoulders, so the bar's not sliding, and B, to make sure that you're not uncomfortable throughout your lift. Okay, guys, so that's a little bit of the front squat. The same concept, as far as technique goes, that's the same. The only difference between front squat, regular squat, is where we're positioning the bar, and ultimately what reps we're stopping at. At seven, that's where our shoulders are going to get fatigued, so that's where we want to stop on that. All right, guys, so that's the regular squat and also the front squat. So we went over a little bit of the technique. Let's check to see if you guys have any questions. And again, if you guys are catching this, after, if you got, yeah Russ, you know I shaved my head, dude. I look clean, right? So if you guys are watching this not live and you do have questions, again, go to the forum or comment underneath and you can ask any questions that you got. All right, guys, so again, we went over that. Now let's go into how do we want to implement the squats, all right? I got to go into some fun technique, and then we'll be able to get our deadlift while everyone else is finishing up their warm-up. All right, guys, so when we talk about implementation, we're looking at goals, okay? Let's review three different goals. We're going to look at muscle gain, which is straight hypertrophy, whether you're a bodybuilder or you just want to look good for the beach, that's one goal. Second goal, we want to look at athletics, okay? If we want to improve, now, athletics by itself is even a very wide facet. We could say, do we want to get more explosive? Do we want to be more powerful? Do we want to have more endurance? Or do we want to have a combination of a couple of those factors? Or do we want to even incorporate the muscle gain with some athletic movement? And then the third is looking at fat loss. Okay, so that's usually the typical three goals we're looking at. When we look at hypertrophy, again, where we want to implement it is regardless, I think, of all of those categories, we want to make sure that this, move, this movement or any of your main compound movements are first. That's the most energy draining. Then we can add in all the other things we have coming in after it, the secondary movements, the auxiliary movements. Okay. So again, looking at squats for hypertrophy, we're looking at 8 to 10 reps usually with anywhere from 3 all the way up to 10 sets. 10 sets, we're talking about German volume training the last couple weeks. That's going to be just pure hypertrophy. Okay, that's just looking good for aesthetic purposes. You might even hurt potentially your endurance or strength because it's so demanding and there's so many sets going on and you're just recruiting so many muscle fibers and it's so taxing, okay? Then we can look at, now, besides German volume training, going back to traditional three, four, five sets, okay? Those are where we're also not going to be able to just get hypertrophy, but now looking at an athletic performance, we can even gain some muscle, but we can also improve our endurance by that 10 rep range because then your muscles are still going to be in that potentially hypertrophy range and also energy demanding and being able to perform for short bursts, okay? Anywhere from 30 seconds to two minutes, let's say, okay? Once we go after that for just pure endurance purposes, whether you're a soccer player, whether you're a marathoner or anything like that, we may even look from 12 to 20 reps, okay? So now we're looking at that kind of athletic performance. Now, let's look at the fat loss perspective. So what we care about more for fat loss is, again, more metabolic increase, but also muscle engagement. So we might not even look at heavy weights, we might not even go to a barbell. What we might also do is add some dumbbells, and get our heart rate up, and get some fat burning from there, and for way less about the recovery. Or get a belt, and then you just lift heavy ass weight, like Chuck's about Right in your face. So, so alright guys, we went over some of the hypertrophy, we went over some of the athletic performance purposes, and we went over a little bit of the fat loss. Alright guys, if you have more questions, you can dive into that too. But now it's time to get the real lifting going. Alright guys, so again, let's start it up. Form Police is probably going to start us up, and then we'll kind of go from there. Form Police is going to warm up a little bit. 
Oh, uh, okay. Foreign Police is warming up first. You got to remember, I'm 40. Exactly. Foreign Police is 40, so you got to make sure he's warm. Yeah, Chuck. You need help putting some weight up on here, Chuck? No, that's all right. Got it? All right, guys, so now I'm just going to kick it with you a little bit. All right, we'll dive into a little bit more of that implementation. Besides just looking at our basic hypertrophy, besides the basic fat loss, besides our basic athletic improvement, okay, especially while Chuck's lifting, we're still going to stay on squats. All right, guys, we're not talking about deadlifts now. Even though Chuck's going to be deadlifting and everybody else is, and I'm going to be jumping in with them, we're still talking about squats. That's the theme of the day. So, again, when we're talking about squats, we're still talking about the posterior kinetic chain. And, again, when we're looking at the posterior kinetic chain or PKC as I like to refer to it as just because it's a cool acronym and I want to sound fancy um, we're looking at the back of our body so and going from the calves up to the hamstrings to the glutes lower back middle back upper back all that fun stuff now this is not to say we're not hitting the quads it's not to say we're not hitting our abs just to stabilize and keep our body in the proper position or our anterior hip flexors and all those muscles that are in between but a majority of the movements that are going to be an endurance athlete, the posterior kinetic chain is going to be very important for you. Okay, and that's where you also see it on the deadlifts. So, now we kind of, again, got that brief understanding set wise, but now let's look at where does it fit into our program. And what I mean by it is, like I kind of mentioned before and I alluded to, we're going to start with it. So, whether it's your deadlift, squat, bench press, uh, clean and press, all these big compound movements, they should be in the beginning of your workout. And they shouldn't really be stacked together. So we shouldn't really be squatting, deadlifting, and bench pressing all in one day. Unless we're going for max, uh, either PRs or max reps or something along those lines, and you're gonna give yourself the appropriate time in between. All right, guys, so that's where the it's gonna fit at least in what part of your program. Now let's look at how do we wanna plan out our squats, okay? But before we do, I'm gonna get a set in. Okay, guys, I'll be right back. I'm jumping. Chuck, can I get one in here? Can I get a set? All right, guys, so getting our first warm up set in. So, again, going back to the implementation and where do squats fit into our program, let's look at the week. How do we want to break down our week? So, what I highly recommend is starting your week off with squats or with deadlifts, one of the two. Because, again, both are going to be recruiting a tremendous amount of muscles, and again, it's very heavy. The better we're going to perform. So, especially for athletes, Starting your week off with squats is a great way to boost your natural testosterone, boost your hormones. When we're in season, this is not the time to add squats for really any sport. If you're in season, you should not be heavy lifting unless you want to get injured or unless you're coming back from an injury and you try to get yourself back on the field. But PRs, max reps, all that heavy lifting stuff should not be done in season. That's for out of season leading up to season or some conditioning in between. All right, guys, so that's where we're going to fit it in for our athletes. Now, let's look at fat loss and let's look at some muscle gain. For both, again, the same almost concept. We want to start our week off with those, or with those high compound lifts because, again, we're going to get such a benefit and such a great value hormonally, metabolically, and also just challenging our muscles in the growth. But, especially for hypertrophy, I really like having two leg days or two uh, challenging days where we're incorporating squats and deadlifts. So if you're going to be squatting, then you want to also deadlift that week as well. So that you can make sure you're finishing and ending your week with a nice hormonal kick in the butt. Okay, because then you're not overtraining or overworking the same muscles, but you're getting a lot of the same muscle groups to kick out some hormones. Okay, so that's where we want to fit it in, especially for muscle gain. Now when we're looking for fat loss, again, we are probably not going to go as heavy with the weight, and if we are going to go heavy with the weight, we want to make sure that it's going to be 
a relatively higher rep range. So we're still going to be going probably 6 to 12. We're not going to be going lower than 6. So that's more power. It's a little bit more energy demanding for different reasons. And we're not going to go more than 12 because realistically, more than 12 reps isn't going to benefit fat loss. We're going to look more into the endurance phases of our training. And if that's a secondary goal or another goal, cool, then that makes sense, okay? But realistically, we say between 6 and 12 reps for fat loss. And even for muscle gain, it still kind of works hand in hand. Realistically, when we're weight training guys, fat loss isn't going to be as much of a concern during the workout. The real benefit and where fat loss is going to come into play is once we've gained new muscle and that muscle has kicked in our new metabolic rate or increased our metabolic rate and we're able to burn more fat either throughout the regular day while we're sleeping or while we're doing cardio because we have more muscles, they're going to burn up more energy, ultimately allowing us to burn more fat. And then that also comes into play what our nutrition is going to look like. So that's, again, another conversation. And we have a bunch of great articles on nutrition that we can look at. Hi right, guys, so again, now it's time for another set on some deadlifts. Where are we going? We only go to next. Guys, we got shots fired here. See that guy's Jared calling out Chuck. He's calling him old. He's calling him out of shape, and he's saying he can lift more than him. So Chuck can lift more than him. Right. So that's what I heard. I heard you said you can lift more. Oh, I said it. No, that's what I heard. Trying to figure out who's saying this on the interval and who's saying this on the interval. Oh, it's a stop. Yes, it does. It makes sense. So again, guys, we have our uh, max rep leaderboard. I'm sorry, our max weight leaderboard, our PRs. Chuck's gonna be number one on all of them, right, guys? So we're just busting both Jared and Chuck's balls here right now, having a little bit of fun. And again, I'm challenging all you guys. Tell us what your max are, send in some videos, let's challenge each other, share with your friends, let's make this a lot more fun, all right? Because we got tons of people coming out for Power Hour. Let's make it more fun. Where are the 25s? 25. 245 Alright guys, so we went over, let's review here a little bit. I always like to review to make sure we got things clear. So we went over the benefits of squats, kind of briefly looked over it. So we were talking about the hormonal benefits, talking about the metabolic increase, talking about the muscle engagement and recruitment, talking about the benefits to athletes, to muscle gaining goals, and to also fat loss goals. Okay. Then we were discussing obviously our techniques. Went over a little bit of our regular standard squat. Went over our front squat. Okay, those are two main components. We could get a little crazy and go into Bulgarian split squats. We can talk about wall squats. We can talk about, again, pistol squats and all those variations. I kind of want to save those for another day because they're so uh, different as far as when we're looking at pistol squats, split squats, all that. Uh, what? But. Wall squats is going to be one of those standards that's going to be very similar to our regular standard back squat and our front squat. We're positioning our bodies and we're positioning our posture. Okay? So, 
we got all those uh, fun little facts. And then we talk about the implementation. We talk a little bit about, okay, uh, nutritionally, how we're going to want to benefit our body as far as you're going to want to eat accordingly to it. Again, I'm not going to dive into real big details, but we're going to look at, again, we're going to re-bring up glycogen. That's our sugar, okay? So we're going to use some of our energy from our glycogen storage. So that's why you'll see me either having a banana to replenish or to recharge in case I feel like I didn't eat a lot that day. Don't mind Ernest just killing the speed bag in the background. He likes to go in. But you want to make sure that you're eating according to your training, but also your goals. Okay, so like we said, we discussed where the squats fit into your week and to your program. If I'm squatting on Monday, guess what? Either Sunday night, if I know that I'm going to lift early Monday morning, or Monday before my workout, I'm going to bring in some carbs. Okay, unless I'm purely concerned with fat loss and I'm not going heavy lifts, then I might not even really go high carbs and allow my body to drain my glycogen storages and then also tap into our fat storages because when we go back after our workout and refuel, we don't take in as many carbs. Guess what? To restore those glycogen storages, our body can kick into another gear and use our fat to break it down and then replenish it. Okay, and that's a whole other system that we can talk about what happens with fat being broken down and the whole entire conversions that happen there. But again, we're not going to go into that. I'm going to get in the next set and I think, Ernest, are you going? I guess. Get him, Ernest, and then I'm going to go. Uh, yeah, he's probably warm up. Let me get, wait, let me get one in real quick. You do what you do, Mike. Yeah, me and him. Yeah, Mike. Like you look at your Yeah, Ernest, get him. Oh, it's four police time. So one thing I'm going to throw in there, guys, is since we're here at Power Lift with them, where I don't need to be keeping up with them. Or if you have someone that's similar in your body type and strength and they start going up, then you're going to want to push yourself. And that's, again, going to hold you accountable. And maybe on the days you might want to skip, you're going to want to go back in because like, oh, I can't let that fall behind. Really, it should be you versus you, not you versus anyone else. But it's, again, any kind of extra motivation and accountability won't hurt. All right, guys. So that's really the topics I wanted to cover for this power hour. Really kind of simple, relatively basic. I hope you guys enjoyed the topic. Doesn't really seem like we have too many questions coming in on the chat forum. So I'm going to kind of call here, guys. We're going to keep the live stream going, though, for our lifts. But this is pretty much going to be it for the squat section of our power hour. And I hope you guys just lift us, kick, enjoy us lifting and kicking ass. All right? Enjoy. Now it's just 12 time. Spring. Like, how much should I go for? Uh, I'm going to do it. Yeah, 
Let's check Jared's technique right here. Is there a scooter involved? No. I don't know what you're going to do. I'm not going to get you to a certain spot. You have to be everybody there. And then I'm going to take my photos. So guys, this is where the form police comes in and just shits on Jared's leg. So again guys, this is where we want to look at why is technique breaking down. There's a combination of factors here, but for Jared specifically, there's a common factor here, a common denominator that I know especially happens with him that maybe our younger audiences can relate to out here, or really just anyone can relate to. It's when you try and lift with your ego and not lift with technique. And what I mean by that is when you lift with your ego, Jared, is you're going to put on more weight than you should handle at that particular moment, or you're just not using the proper mechanics. So we want to, again, we're not trying to lift